Hello friends and welcome to this video. We are with the seventh chapter that is titled as Wavelet Transformation and we are learning the subject Advanced Digital Signal Processing. This is the very important video from this chapter because earlier videos were dedicated to understand all the fundamentals of the various especially the Fourier as a mathematical tool one of them so that we can process the signal as per the desired requirements here but what are the advantages of having the wavelet theory into the views in comparison to earlier is supposed to get started from this particular video earlier topics where we had the introduction right from the origins of the wavelet comparison of the wavelets with other reality transform knowing the heisenberg uncertainty principle the journey of development into the wavelet family from Morley to Dubaychis via Mallard and a discussion on Fourier series from geometrical point of view we are already covered with. So let us exactly begin with the wavelet transform though practically we are making the use of the discrete form it is very very essential to understand what is continuous wavelet transform. So let us begin to start with this particular video to see the details of the continuous type of the wavelet transformation. So let us start with. So here we are going to start with the topic that it is continuous that means they are not having any kind of repetitions. The noisy signal, the intermittent transient signals for which the wavelet transformers are particularly useful that we are going to see from this particular topic here. See, wavelets have the special ability to have examination of the signals simultaneously at time as well as the frequency aspects here. So that it was the limitation of the Fourier tool that is why it was a requirement for development of a new tool to handle both of these tasks and that wavelet theory has accomplished here. So here we are having the wavelets examining the signal both into the time and frequency here. So what are the different applications? As I stated, we are going to see a list of various applications where the use of wavelet theory is there. So the current applications of the wavelet theory is including a lot many applications i can list few of them first one is climate analysis then financial time series analysis heart monitoring condition monitoring of rotating machinery then we have the seismic signal denoising the seismic signal is from the earth's surface denoising of astronomical images is also possible with the application of the wavelet theory. Next to that, we have cracking the surface characterization, characterization of turbulent intermittency, audio and video compression also is possible with the help of wavelet theory, compression of medical and thumb impression records, fast solution of partial differential equations also we can make possible with the help of wavelet theory. The computer graphics is also nowadays utilizing wavelet theory and lot many applications we can list out here. Now the first level introduction of the wavelet transformation we will have. So what exactly the term wavelet mean as we have the current topic title continuous wavelet transform we find the three terms here first one is the continuous type here the second one is wavelet and the third one is transformation here so the middle term wavelet we shall introduce so wavelet mean a very small wave here and what about the analysis with the help of this wavelet so wavelet analysis is about analyzing the signal with short duration finite energy functions so as just now we have so unlike the Fourier transformation, we have a variety of wavelets that are used for signal analysis and from this family of wavelets, choice of a particular wavelet will depend on the type of application at hand. 
in the starting topic of this particular chapter where I have shown you a discussion on the development of the wavelet. So thereupon the pictorial representation of the various wavelet types I have already shown you and it is really very very clear from the first point that it is a small wave. So characterization of the various type of the wavelets we can have uh, based on the shape of that particular small wave here. So while manipulating the wavelet we have two alternatives. So the first one is to make translation. Here in this illustration you see a small wavelet here and on the horizontal scale when we are having change into the position of the wavelet we can say that this is nothing but the translation and next to that the another alternative for manipulating with this wavelet is scaling operation here so here it is the illustration where we are making change into the scale or you can also say the change into the level see again into the horizontal plane we have another but the second manipulating operation with the wavelet which is called as scaling so with the help of translation and scaling we are going to accomplish the wavelet transformation applicable to the given task here now the question is what exactly we are going to do with the help of translation and scaling and how it is related to the signal to be processed here see the signal to be processed with the help of wavelet theory is supposed to be matched by the translation and scaling operation whereas the wavelet is having a fixed shape here so in this particular procedure if the wavelet is matching the shape of the signal well at a specific scale and location as generally we are having so that time a large transform value we obtain as a result of applying the continuous type of the wavelet transformation initially we can say here and if however the wavelet and the signal do not correlate well there is no similarity between them at good level so a low value of the transformation will be obtained as a result of applying the wavelet application so now the transform is basically computed at the various locations of the signal and for the various scales of the wavelet thus filling up the transform plane here and if the process is done in a smooth and continuous fashion that is if the scale and position is varied very very smoothly so that time we have the transform to be called as the continuous wavelet transform here here we are having one illustration where the signal wavelet and the transformation is discussed here so very first of all at the top you see a signal here and see that particular signal is tried to be matched with the help of the wavelet here see in the solid lines we have a fixed shape of the wavelet here and thereupon local matching between the signal and the wavelet is leading to the large transformation coefficient as you see the similarity between the window or the local area of the signal or local portion of the signal is having a match with the wavelet here and see the details of the wavelet transformation are here described in detail where we have scaling operation and the translation operation the two axes are represented with the terminology of scale and position here we have the current scale at the middle and the current location at the middle of the corresponding axis here so it is basically the wavelet transformation plot which is two dimensional here and there it is one point at the middle which is representing higher the coefficient more darker the point so it is the detail of the same here so with respect to this particular illustration the transformation here it is computed at the various locations of the signal 
and for the various scales of the wavelet thus filling up the transform plane as shown here and if the process is done in a smooth and continuous fashion we are having the transformation to be called as the continuous wavelet transformation here so if the scale and position there are changed in the fixed steps here we can call them the discrete steps the transformation is called as the discrete wavelet transform the difference we know here and we are going to make continuation with the application of discrete wavelet transform for whatever the digital type of the tools we are handling nowadays now plotting the wavelet transformation will allow us a picture to be built up for finding similarity or correlation between the wavelet at the various scales and location with the signal to be processed here and if you talk about the fourier transformation comparatively we have the fourier transformation or the plot called as the spectrum here as we are having the domain into the frequency part here so the spectrum is one the dimensional array of the values whereas in wavelet transformation we get a two dimensional array of the values here that is the very important point as we switch from the fourier theory to that of the wavelet theory here now on this slide you see the two mathematical formulations here see the fourier transformation spectrum is depending on the type of the wavelet used for the analysis here so mathematically we are denoting wavelet by psi suffix a comma b psi is function of t so this is equal to 1 upon under root mod a multiplied to psi of t minus b divided by a here now in this representation on the left hand side as well as the right hand side we have the use of small a and small b what are the small a and small b first of all see small b is a location parameter if you get back to the previous illustration we have the horizontal axis having the position marked here so small b is giving us the information regarding the exact location on that particular horizontal axis whereas small a is the scaling parameter so it is a parameter on the another axis so the scaling and the positioning axis both are forming the two dimensional plot here now for any function so that is satisfying the criteria and that we can call it to be a wavelet function here so the wavelet function here it is represented as psi of t here so it should be time limited here and for a given scaling parameter small a we are making the translations of the wavelet by varying the parameter b which is the location parameter here and the definition of the wavelet transformation as we switch to the wavelet domain i can say in the two dimensional plot we represent with the help of capital letter w so capital w in the bracket small a comma b is nothing but the time integral of f of t multiplied to 1 upon under root mod a into psi of t minus b divided by a dt here so here f of t is our signal so the f of t is multiplied to the rhs of the earlier equation and it is integrated over the fixed time range here so for every a comma b we are having the wavelet transformation coefficient that is representing how much the scaled wavelet is similar to the function at the location we define t is equal to small b by a here so this was the introduction to the continuous type of the wavelet transformation and by the next lecture we shall be addressing the uncertainty principle and the time scaling tiring in the same chapter thank you